Hi everyone, welcome back to Gendazen. Today we are here with a new video on incremental lines of red gears seen in enamel. We are continuing with our lectures on the topic enamel, which is the outermost layer of the tooth and is made up of enamel rods. Enamel rods form in increments, parts. One part is formed and there is a break or line. Another part is formed and another line. So these lines are known as incremental lines of red gears, which under microscope appear as brownish bands or brownish lines separating the increments of enamel. So this incremental lines of red gears can come as a short note for you or it can be part of your long question on structure of enamel where you have to include all these structures. We have already covered first five in the previous five videos. Please go through them also. So in today's video, we'll discuss the incremental lines of red gears, also neonatal line, which is a type of incremental line. We'll also talk about another term that is cross striations. Striations means lines. Another type of lines which are seen in enamel but they are different from incremental lines we'll see how a detailed video on this will be made after we'll cover with all the structures of enamel so let's begin with today's video on incremental lines of red gears before we start don't forget to subscribe to dentos and also hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new videos so what today is a story day i'm going to tell you a short story about the incremental lines of red gears of enamel enamel is formed by our cell our favorite cell that is ameloblast cell ameloblast cell along with his friends more ameloblasts will form enamel each ameloblast will form its own enamel rod so they start their work on the first day of the week that is on monday they will form one segment of enamel then on tuesday another segment then like that on wednesday then like that on Thursday, but then on Thursday, they are little tired. Then they come on Friday. On Friday, they are little more tired. And then on Saturday, they are forming another segment, but they are extremely tired, very, very tired because they have formed so much of enamel and interrod enamel. So now they are tired. So they thought of taking a break. Yes, like we take a break after a week on Sunday, these ameloblasts will take a break and there will be a rest line. So they will get recharged and they will come back on Monday with smiling faces to restart their work to form another increment of enamel. So we can see that it goes like this. There is formation of an increment in a week. Then there is a rest line. Then another increment is formed in a week. Then again, there is a rest line. When ameloblast will take break, so there is a rest line. Then another increment is formed by these cells and again there will be rest line. So like that, this these increments will keep on forming in a weekly fashion. So there is a weekly rhythm of the enamel formation and the lines which are present in between these increments are known as incremental lines of red gears. So these are the incremental lines of red gears which are seen as brownish lines. Now each enamel rod is also forming in segments that every day one segment is formed and in between these segments we can see dark lines. So these dark lines which represent the daily segment of enamel formation are known as cross striations. So we can say that incremental lines of red just represent the weekly rhythm of enamel formation in increments and cross striations represent the daily rhythm of enamel formation. So that is the story. Now let's see how you have to write your answer. So you have to talk about four things. What are these lines? When are they seen? Where in the enamel are they seen? And why are they seen? And can anything go wrong with these lines? What is a neonatal line? And one more thing before we end this video. Let's start. First question, what are these lines? Now, these are the incremental lines of red gears given by red gears. So the name red gears is there. You have to remember this because we can see incremental lines in dentin and cementum also. They are known by other names. So your exam question, viva question can be what are the incremental lines of enamel known as? So they are known as incremental lines of red gears also known as tri of red gears because tri means lines and what do they represent what do they illustrate incremental pattern of enamel formation that is enamel is forming in increments in a pattern that is one layer is formed after that another break is there another layer is formed again break another layer is formed so we can say that enamel is forming in layers one after the another so this also represents the successive 
apposition of layers of enamel successive means succeeding one layer succeeding another apposition means formation so th that is happening in a weekly rhythm rhythm so that is what our incremental lines are of edges are they are representing three things incremental pattern of enamel formation and enamel formation in layers successive apposition in layers in a weekly rhythm during the formation of crown that is when enamel is forming so that is our question number one what second question when are they seen they can can be seen in the ground sections of the teeth we can see them in both in longitudinal section as well as in cross section when if these sections are taken off a calcified tooth in which the enamel is formed or in which the enamel is forming then only we can see lines yeah so based on the type of light light which we use to see these lines they can appear different colors so they can appear as brownish bands when seen in the transmitted light and if we use reflected light in our microscope then they are seen as bluish white so that is the difference in the color based on the light that is used and that can be your entrance question now coming to the third question where are they seen first in longitudinal section so if we draw it will be like this there is enamel rods below that we have dentine and remaining enamel rods in the cuspal region and surrounding these enamel rods are incremental lines so labeling we have enamel we have dentine in between these two we have dentino enamel junction and there we have these lines in the enamel those are known as incremental lines of redzius or stri of redzius so we can see that these are the series of lines that is many lines starting from dentino enamel junction going towards the surface of tooth and if this is the dentine and this is the tip of the dentine this is the tip of the dentine so these these lines are surrounding this tip of dentine so that is how we are going to write that series of lines from dentino enamel junction to the tooth surface and surrounding the tip of the dentine now if we look at the lines in the cervical region in this region that is cervical regions again they are starting from the dentino enamel junction but they run obliquely they run obliquely in an oblique direction and they deviate occlusally towards the occlusal surface they reach the surface so in the cervical part they run obliquely and they deviate occlusally that is longitudinal section now we'll see how they appear in the where they appear in the cross section or transverse section they look like beautiful rings or circles so these are the concentric rings or concentric circles concentric means they all are placed around the common center around the same center so how it is seen so when we take a cross section like this center in the center we have the pulp space where pulp is removed surrounding that we have dentine and in between the dentine and enamel we have these concentric rings so if we label this is pulp space then we have dentine and in the enamel we have these concentric rings or stri of red now do they resemble something i'm giving you a hint here as the tree grows it grows it forms rings which are known as growth rings and we, when we cut a cross section we can see these so these concentric rings are compared to the growth rings or annular rings seen in the cross section of a tree so we'll draw them like this so that is the transfer section now we come to the next question why are they seen incremental lines as the term says they designate these structures that is variations in the formation of enamel because amyloblast cells they form one increment then they take rest and another week they form another increment now these two increments may be different in their structure and composition because of which we can see this line so these lines are due to variations in the structure and mineralization of the increments of enamel so these increments differ in mineralization content they can be less mineralized hypo mineralized hyper they can be more mineralized so these incremental lines reflect the variations in structure and variation in mineralization seen during the growth of enamel now although they are ascribed to weekly rhythm in enamel production that is weekly rhythm of enamel formation is happening and showing the structural variations in these increments but still the exact cause is not known basis of their production is still not clear so we can say that exact nature of these developmental changes is not known now three reasons given for these incremental lines first because of the periodic bending these enamel rods when forming they may bend again they will form and again they will bend so where these bends are taking place there we can see these lines and they are the incremental lines so these are the periodic bending of enamel rods second we already know variations in the organic structure of these increments can lead to the these incremental lines or third is variations in the calcification rhythm can also lead to formation of these incremental lines so these are the three 
reasons for the question why now another proposal has been given that is because they reflect the oppositional or layer growth of incremental growth of the enamel formation let's see it in a diagram it says that as the crown becomes bigger as the enamel layers keep on growing suppose these are the ameloblast cells they are forming enamels so they are growing in size so to increase to compensate for this growth more cells are added from the cervical region new cohort cohort means new group of cells is added cervically to compensate for this increased growth in increase in size of enamel these cells will grow go decussate that is they will cross and they will move more coronally cusp towards the cuspal region and means they will lay down another layer of enamel here so we can see that the layer formed by four cells will be different from the one which is formed by the next cohort or group of cells so because of this demarcation we can see the line so demarcation between enamel produced by these cohorts or groups of cells may appear as incremental line so that can be the another reason now we come to some facts that is mean daily rate of enamel formation in daily we have 3.5 to 4 micrometer of enamel is formed and this rate increases from inner to the outside that is as we go from inside to the outside of the enamel and it decreases as we go from the incisal region or cuspal region to the cervical region now thickness of in these bands can be 4 micrometer to 150 micrometer that can be the range and all these lines do not reach the surface some remain within the enamel and there can be 25 to 30 lines or 25 to 30 stride do, don't reach the surface now these lines are evenly spaced when the weekly rhythm of 6 to 11 days is followed then they these increments are formed at the same distance so they will be evenly spaced lines now can something go wrong with these lines yes this is the normal rhythm but when we are sick we are not well we are not able to study like we do regularly same goes with ameloblast when they are sick like they can get upset due to stress or if there are some metabolic disturbances then their enamel formation will be not normal so ameloblast may work for four days then they will take rest again they will work for few days again they will take rest like that they will keep on doing and the periods of rest may become longer because they are sick also the lines will become closer together because they are forming less increments of enamel now as compared to the regular intervals regular formation of enamel so these two things are happening leading to the lines which are seen on section as broadened line increased thickness of line and they are more prominent they can be easily seen or they are said to be accentuated that is prominent incremental line so when are they seen there are systemic disturbances that will affect the ameloblast cell that is during the process of enamel formation so that can be your entrance question now coming to another enlarged incremental line which is seen when there is a great physiological change happening at the birth because some of the enamel is formed before birth and some is formed after birth so because of which there is a line which is known as neonatal line so this neonatal line is present between enamel which is formed before birth that is prenatal this is prenatal enamel and the enamel which is formed after birth that is known as postnatal after birth so why this is happening because the prenatal enamel is forming in the mother's body in well controlled environment with good nutrition so it is different from the one which is forming in the outside the mother's body and in a different environment so because of abrupt change in the nutrition and environment so there will be difference in the structure of these two so which one is better what do you think prenatal is better because of better nutrition and better environment and it has less defects as compared to postnatal so that can be your important viva question what is neonatal line where is it seen so that is your short note if you get on neonatal line you have to write all this and you have to draw this diagram now coming to the last thing so these some incremental lines they reach the surface of enamel and they can be seen clinically on the tooth as wavy bands wave like bands and in between these bands we can see lines which are furrows so they are seen on the enamel surface in newly formed teeth and these wavy bands which are the outside surface parts of the incremental lines are known as perikamita and that can be your entrance question so these are the furrows and these are the wavy bands so let's summarize what we have learned what are the incremental lines these lines are the represents the successive apposition of enamel incremental pattern of enamel in weekly rhythm 
when are they seen in both longitudinal and cross section when seen in the transmitted light they appear as brownish bands and when seen under reflected light they appear as bluish white where are they seen? in the longitudinal section they are seen as series of lines surrounding the tip of dentine and in the cross section they are seen as concentric rings or concentric circles why are they seen because of variations in calcification variations in organic structure and periodic bending of enamel rods and as well they represent the incremental pattern of enamel formation along with that you can add neonatal line that is in large incremental line present between prenatal and postnatal enamel so that is what you can write for your short note let's check what have you learned what is the other name for incremental lines of red gears in longitudinal section they surround the tip of what structure in cross section they appear as what type of circles or rings they reflect what type of rhythm while cross stations reflect what type of rhythm of enamel formation so where do we see closer and prominent incremental lines in what type of disturbances what are the external surface manifestations of these lines known as and neonatal line is seen between what two types of enamel so that is all for this video if you really like the video tap on the like button and share the video with your friends Keep learning, keep watching, keep smiling and good luck for your exams. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.